So, you're conducting a church count. Exciting. But before you do that, make sure to take note of these tips that I have. Most of these are basic ones. And unfortunately, most of the time, we miss those basic things and that would somehow affect the overall flow of the event itself so the first one that you have to consider as an organizer would be the goal and theme of your camp or event everything will evolve around this and you can ask your senior pastor about this one in our case we were invited to conduct the camp for a certain church so we were just outsiders or partners for this event and what we really did first before thinking about the flow or activities is of course we asked the senior pastor what their theme is what their goal is and basically they just told us that they want their members to go back to evangelism and discipleship and from that we came up with a theme or title which is refuel and don't worry you understand more about that later so the next thing that you have to prepare would be the venue. Make sure to find a place that can accommodate the number of target people that you want to join in the event, including the staff. And she's so creamy. <laughs> and then things that you may want to consider would be, of course, the function hall. Um, if it's conducive because you will be having topics right there and of course praise and worship and then next would be big space for outdoor activities and if you want to have a baptism or activities that are in the pool itself so a pool and yeah that's it next would be the program flow for the next two to three days of the camp so usually the camp would take two to three days right so you have to spread out your activities and topics on those number of days so think about how many minutes can you allot for that specific activity or topic and then next would be the praise and worship. Praise and worship. This is very essential. Of course, this is a church camp. And you as organizer will have to communicate to the team about how many songs they're going to play and how many minutes or budget time they were allotted every time they go on stage. So in our case, since again, we were just invited, the church already has a praise and worship team. And we made sure to give them the instruction that they only have 20 to 30 minutes and they can sing two worship or solemn songs and then one upbeat or praise song. All right, so let's move on to the word or topics. This is very important as well, of course, since we called it Refuel Camp. The topics that we had were the need of the hour, which is revival, and then we have loading or unloading, which actually talks about forgiveness. Or releasing forgiveness and then the third one was gas up so it's about igniting the burden for the lost or for the love of people and then to dream again dream again remember the goal was actually evangelism and discipleship and it all starts with revival it all starts with a heart that is forgiveness and then here comes igniting gassing up and then we took it further to gear up which is about unity in the church and next would be session five which is tune up which is about discipleship in the church so and lastly we did session seven which is fill up and it's all about the holy spirit that will empower us to witness and do discipleship because again even if we know how and we have the heart but if we don't have the holy spirit with us then um it's not going to be as powerful as it would be so as you can see the topics right there are all in line with the theme and um, each topic were titled in a way that it's still very much in theme with Refuel. It has a progression and every topic was placed there because it has a purpose that is to target the goal that we have set beforehand. So next would be indoor activities. Of course, we had indoor icebreakers. And if you want to have an idea about how that looks like, I have an entire video for that that you can check right here. Next is we also did cheer competition it's not cheerleading or some sort it's like a cheer team cheer or chant that we did at the very beginning of the camp itself because this one really builds up um the team and also the momentum of the entire event <laughs> And we also had this major inner activity that is very much in theme with the goal and that is a poster making activity about their dream for the church or their own cell groups or life groups. 
So basically, that's also a contest, and we had a criteria for judging on that. And um, yeah, it was fun. And what we provided them were just drawing materials, and they had enough time for them to prepare that and present that on the stage. Next is outdoor activities, which is the most exciting part, aside from the word itself. So we had, um, it's not just the game, so we also had a bonfire night during the first night of the camp itself. And this is in application of the word loading or unloading, which is forgiveness. So what we did is we had them come up with a hate list, where they have to list down all the people that have hurt them. and. Um, it's like a prophetic gesture that they are now releasing forgiveness because they're gonna burn that hate list during the bonfire activity. And then, and then of course, we had the games, which is one of the major highlights of the camp. And um, this is actually the second time that we have conducted the camp for this very church. And it's very unforgettable. So in the games, it's not just actually just having fun, but there's a lesson behind every game. And as much as possible, we curated the games, we included the games that are much in line with the topics and the theme that we had. So if you want to know more about those games, just check out this video that I have right here. And then let's move on to logistics or materials. And um, of course, number one would be food and accommodation. Second would be IDs for the participant and the staff. The third one would be team assignment. You guys, this is again very, very essential. Um, if you are the team organizer and you're assigned to, you know, arrange the team or assign the members for each team, you have to keep in mind your members' strengths and weaknesses and as much as possible distribute them as fairly as possible to each team because we really don't want another team or a few teams to have an unfair advantage over others, right? So this is very crucial in a sense that you have to consider the age, the limitations, the strengths of each of the members. Next would be the bandana and the flag. So um, we had team colors. So actually, we didn't ask them to come up with team names. Um, we just did the colors. So there's team green, there's team white, there's team cream, yellow, etc. So we made sure to provide bandanas for each member. And it's according to their team color and we also had team flags well oh my gosh the thing is um it's it's a very minor thing but it actually builds up the camaraderie camaraderie between team members um they become instantly united because of the bandana it's like their identity and then the flag we had a twist about it wherein um they should never leave their flag alone or on the floor or else they'll get demerit or what. So that's like their responsibility all throughout the camp. It's like building a sense of ownership in their team. And then of course, materials for the activities, scorecards, because um, we're gonna flash the, we're gonna flash team scores on the screen from time to time. This will keep everyone updated about their status. Of course, everyone here is competitive and they wanna win. So the flasher scores there from time to time and then this just tears up the team spirit. And we also have medicine, our first aid kit. So um, we are not anticipating accidents to happen. We're not praying for that to happen, of course. But it is always best to be prepared. And you will actually understand how much you need it when you really, when you come to a point that you really, really need it. So might as well come prepared as you are make sure that the medicine or first aid kit is complete and next would be awards this is the it's like their prize for being so participative and doing their best so remember we have scorecards therefore the team with the most number of um, points by the end of the camp will be the overall champion and that's like the main goal of each team but there are other awards that are available as well so we had the best team leader we have the best cheer we have the best poster um most punctual and we also had the best team so it's not necessarily the best overall champion team but the best team is the team that is worth emulating for and then don't forget the house rules this will set the expectations and tone of the camp and it will also determine the success of the camp it will set up the atmosphere and how people will behave and what is expected for them so we also made sure that we come up with a merit or demerit system and they're informed about it um remember like for example um flags they're not supposed to leave their flag alone or 
put it on the floor um, or else they'll get demerit. Or we also had this thing called buddy buddy system since, since we don't have enough stuff to, to look at everyone if they're safe or not. So you made sure that there's a buddy buddy system wherein they're not allowed to go anywhere alone. They have to be with their buddy or their team members. Or else they'll get demerit. And then if they did something good, or they're the most punctual, or they're the earliest, or the most complete, or they did something that is worth emulating, then we're gonna give them plus points about it. So when it comes to camp outdoor games, it may be easy to come up with those activities that you have in mind. However, there are things that you also have to consider to make sure that your activity or games would be a major success. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys practical tips or factors that you need to consider to make sure that your outdoor games in a camp would be a major success. Because unfortunately, if you are going to miss a few of these things, it can drastically pull down the momentum of your event and we don't want that. So please make sure to check out this video right here.